Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to take a look at in this video is this Fanville phone. I know you're saying, Willie, you're a Grandstream shop. Well, we are a Grandstream shop uh, primarily. We work on all kinds of PBXs, whether it's Grandstream or... Uh, you know, free PBX or anything basically Asher's based. We also work on, work on free switch based systems such as uh, Unify Talk. But when it comes to the hardware, I have been looking for large button phones because I believe these are going to be very valuable in the near term and uh, even more so than they already are, right? If you've got somebody who uh, has low vision, things like that. Um, and also needs, you know, keys with, uh, maybe some, some additional braille on them to be able to, uh, use the phone. I think this is going to be invaluable and I hope that other manufacturers are going to follow suit. Now there are a few manufacturers out there, but the one with the best price to, um, feature ratio is Fanville. I actually bought this phone myself. And this is the Fanville X305. It's one of their newer products. And this is their large button phone. Look how big those buttons are. And you can see we've got a dedicated help button here, huge voicemail button. And then you can see we've kind of got these buttons that have, I don't know, it looks like maybe you could slide something in there, right? Well, it comes with these little icons that you can put in there and you can pre-program those buttons to do different things. So uh, in the box, you get a kind of a uh, quick setup guide. You get the phone itself. You get the handset. You get the handset cord, an ethernet cable, and the back plate. Uh, there is an optional wall mounting plate. I did not buy that. So real quick before we get the phone hooked up and we take a look at all the other features and functionality, let's take a look at these other what these other little icon cardboard things are here, these little shapes. So, and you've got that one. Looks like maybe, um, I don't know who that is. Use your imagination. Oops. And then that one is a gentleman, it looks like. Did not mean to drop that in between the keys on my keyboard. Then this person, this male looks to be a little younger. Very happy. And then a little bit of a younger Female, so uh, you might use these buttons, you know, for uh, family, close friends, things like that. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to put this phone together. We're going to plug it in. We're going to join it to my grand stream, and then we'll call from my regular desk phone over this. And heck, maybe this is going to become my regular phone. But I'll be right back. All right, so I've got the phone uh, put together. You can see it's got the the back plated on there, so it can rest. It's going to rest at about a an angle, angle about like that was at about a 45. We've got the handset cord. You can see it's got a nice long handset cord. And one thing that I see a lot when people set up voice over IP phones is that they accidentally plug the handset cord into the headset jack, and then they don't get any dial tone. So make sure that when you plug your phone in, it goes into the, the uh, actual handset jack and not the head, headphone jack. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in. And as with every other VoIP phone, there's a spot for network and a spot for pass-through. So you can see we've got a red light. We've got a what appears to be a full-color Fanville screen. Maybe it's not, but it is It is booting. And you've got the Fanville logo there. So I'll get this booted up. We'll uh, get into the UCM, get an extension for it, get it configured. Oh, yeah, look at that. Did you see the, uh, the speakerphone button turned green? It did. It lit up green. I didn't see if the help button lit up red or not, but we're going to take a look at all these things. We will uh, be right back. 
All right, well, real quick, before we get into it on the computer, is that uh, when the Fanville phone first comes up, it wants to know which uh, language we want to use. So we're going to say OK for English. And now we've got a really nice color display on this. So I'm going to find the IP, and we're going to hop into it. The other thing, by the way, on the side of this, is there is a USB. There's a USB port in, under this white USB plug. So I'm assuming we can expand this, do other things with it. Maybe Fanville has some other things coming out. But let's uh, get into this phone. I'll be right back. All right, so the IP address of the phone is uh, 192.168.66.30. I don't see on the box anywhere where it has default credentials, so I'm assuming it's admin and admin. We'll see what happens. It is admin, admin. Default password is in use. Please change. So we can click that to go ahead and change it. Um, so let's see what we've got here. We've got account. So we can add a user to the phone. So if you're familiar with Fanville phones, this is looking pretty, pretty uh, familiar. Um, and there are some, some systems that you can auto-provision Fanville phones. With our UCM, we will uh, do a manual configuration here in just a minute. I want to poke around. So here we got our network set up. Looks like it does have built-in Wi-Fi. Um, I'm not going to have that enabled, but that's kind of nice. Uh, service port. So here we can change from HTTP to HTTPS. And it has VPN mode. And what's oh, that's kind of nice is that uh, it can do... L2TP or OpenVPN. That's kind of nice. And LLDP, which is enabled by default. What else do we have? We can do uh, our VLAN settings, wireless VLAN settings, 802.11x. All right, what do we have on our line? So right now, uh, line one, which is what we will configure here shortly, is inactive. Uh, we don't have the SIP hotspot uh, set up. Dial plan is going to be default. We've got an action plan here. Now, anybody who's ever messed with Fanville phones, uh, you know they have a lot of settings just like other, other voice over IP phones. Time and date. Um, okay, so we need to change the time zone. To Central Time, and we'll go ahead and apply that, and it should update. The time and date on the phone, so we can also change uh, the time, the way the format looks like. It hasn't updated yet. We'll do uh, 60 seconds and see what happens here. Uh, let's see. We'll return. We got a time plan. Not going to set any of that up. Here's our dial, our uh, tone settings, BTMF settings, screen configuration, power saving. We can do logos. We can put a uh, password on the menu. We've got our phone book, call logs, function keys, soft keys, advanced. So here's that help, that help uh, key. And you can set it up to be a speed dial. Oh, it's all it's automatically set as a speed dial. And then we've got a wire, the wireless key here. So, what else do we need to look at? We can do recording, security. Uh, if you go back and look at several videos um, back, we did a Fanville uh, phone video. And I know several people who use Fanville. In fact, if you have a Fortinet uh, 
phone system. Guess what? Fortinet doesn't make those phones. Fanville makes the Fortinet phones. So let me pull up the UCM and we'll get this thing configured real quick. All right, so I'm going to use extension uh, 5010. I renamed it Big Button Phones. So we're going to come in here. It's going to be 5010 uh, Big Button Phone. Uh, user will be 5010 password. And then let's see, do we have to have something for server name? It configures the server name for account X. I think we just need to put the uh, UCM down here. 183 UDP. I don't think we need to do anything else. Probably the default uh, codex and all that good stuff. We'll take care of it. We'll go ahead and activate that. And now it says we are registered. And on the phone itself, you can see where uh, it now says uh, big button phone up there at the top. So if I call this from my desk phone. hear how loud that is that's pretty it's pretty loud um, and now you can see we've got one missed call there so I'm gonna say okay to that and it shows um, that we've got the missed the missed call there from Willie Howe and you can see it's got a light over here indicating uh, we don't have a voicemail, but it's indicating that we've got missed calls. So if I clear that out, now we're back to the menu. No red light. I like how a lot of these, the newer phones, are keeping all of the missed calls. So let's see what happens if I dial 5,000. So my big button so my phone. Big we got some feedback going on there. But... Um, it dialed just like it should. Didn't have to dial or modify the um, the dial plan or any of that. So what we want to take a look at is we want to take a look at not necessarily M1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, also, I don't know if you've noticed that they do have short press, long press uh, configuration on, on this phone. Um I really like that because you'll know you'll remember that I ordered a, a clearly IP phone, and the only reason that I ordered it is because it was like the Sangoma phones where you could program if you held a, a button with a long press, it would automatically open up an intercom to that line. Um, looks like you, we can probably get into some of that configuration now with the Fanville, and I was told that Fanville could do it, but at the time I was looking at it, you couldn't. Um, but what we want to do is we want to get into this help key and we're going to call this help and we're going to put 5,000 in there and it's going to be the speed dial. And we'll just say big button phone and it is going to be audio and we'll apply that. And so now in theory, if we hit our help button, our big red help button, it should call my desk phone. And there it is. It is calling that. Hi, you've reached the voicemail of Willie Howe. And this and um, when we hit help, what I noticed was this name that we programmed here is what showed up on the screen. So we could change this to like emergency and apply that and then if we hit that button then now it says emergency at the top and you'll notice too that the voicemail is lit up in in green I'm gonna reject that hi you've reached the voicemail of Willie Howe now the help button doesn't light up red. That'd be kind of cool if the help button did light light up.
But uh, I think, oh, also the other thing, I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you look at those keys, you can see the keys do have, you know, the Braille on them. Um, I think these phones, you know, people are going to be aging. Um, I'm going to tell you in 25 years, I'm not going to want a touchscreen phone probably. I'm going to want the buttons. And uh, I just think that it's it's fantastic. I don't know if out of the box, if I hit the voicemail button, let's see what it does. Um, it shows me that I've got no uh, phone messages, but it also doesn't it doesn't actually call voicemail. So I probably have to program that um, in the phone. So, like I said, I have been looking for uh, large button phones. I'll put a an affiliate link if I if I've got one, if I can find one uh, down in the the comments. But what do you think about these big button phones? I really want to know what you think. I've had several conversations for several years with a lot of people about big button phones. And now this is an affordable model. Um, my cost on this was sub 100 uh, US dollars. And when you see some of the other voice over IP phones that are out there that can do this, yeah, they're charging 150 200 $300 a phone. I just because they can, right? Well, now Fanville and hopefully Grandstream and the other manufacturers are going to hop on board and get us uh, more options when it comes to the big button phones. So, but let me know what you think. Uh, I know somebody in the comments is going to say, well, you could use an ATA and use a $20 big button phone. That's true. But then I have to manage all the ATAs. Like, and when I'm deploying these to a system and I can manage them through the system, um, and auto, it becomes a little bit easier when it's a single device, especially for the cost, right? And ATA, what am I at? 40 or 50 bucks for an ATA plus the phone. So I'm almost there for this unit anyway. You can also get a wall mount for this. But no, seriously, let me, let me know. Did I overlook a manufacturer when it comes to these big button phones? Do you have a manufacturer you use? What do you think about this Fanville big button phone? Who else should be making big button phones? Let me know down in the comments and I'll let these other manufacturers know that, Hey, this is what, this is what people out there are saying. So, and if you like this video and these big button phones, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, please subscribe, comment, and share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate links and a Patreon link. If you'd like to support the channel and if you need it consulting for voice over IP, if you uh, need to get a fleet of large button or non large button phones or hotel phones or regular desk phones deployed or any other IT need, reach out at willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form. Someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once I, once again, I'm Willie. I'm so excited about this phone. I can't even talk. I, uh, I'm going to put this on my desk and I'm going to run this as my, as my daily driver for a while right next to uh, my Grandstream GXP 2170. So let me know what you think about this. I'm looking forward to the comments on this because I'm sure it's going to spark great debate. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.